professor Montada from the Institute of Mathematics and Gestion, Valery Bush, uh, and to welcome him to Bulgaria and to our center. Uh, to say it has a wide range in mathematics, wide interest, wide, wide range of interest in mathematics. So I uh, encourage uh, all of our postdocs to take advantage of this and talk to him while he's here. And uh, today, Hussein is going to talk about an interesting connection between singularities and combinatorics. Hussein? Thank you very much, Tony. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. So I will be talking, as Tony said, about arc spaces and uh, integer partitions. But let me begin with uh, identity. 1 plus exponential minus 2 pi divided by 1 plus exponential minus 4 pi divided by 1 plus exponential minus 6 pi and so on. And as you may be as imagining, this is equal to radical of 5 plus radical pi over 2 minus 1 plus radical pi over 2, all of it multiplied by exponential 2 pi over 5. This is not so this formula, uh, Ramanujan sent to Harvey, and when Harvey had seen it, he said this formula should be true. Otherwise, why someone would imagine something like this? And this was around 1913. And seven years later, when Ramanujan uh, knew what a proof is, he gives a proof of this formula. So I, I don't know how, nobody knows how Ramanujan has imaginated this formula, but let me give you an idea about the proof because the proof is important. So he considered a Q difference equation, f of x is equal to f of x times q plus x q times f of x times q squared, so q is a complex number, and he wanted an analytic function at zero, analytic, satisfying f of zero equals to one. So he produces this q difference equation, and one realized that if I divide here by f of x q, so f of x divided by f of x q. Let us call this C of x cubed. So this is equal to 1 plus x cubed divided by f of x cubed over f of x cubed squared. This is nothing but 1 plus x cubed. And this C x cubed where, where I have replaced x by x times q. So plus over 1 plus C x cubed q. I can repeat the same thing. And then I will obtain 1 plus x cubed cube divided by 1 plus x cubed squared divided by 1 plus x cubed cube, if I repeat the same again, and so on. Okay? So, as you can see, if I call this RAM, like Ramanujan, this RAM actually is equal to C of 1 exponential minus 2 pi. Okay, I replace x by 1 and q by exponential minus 2 pi. On the other hand, as I said, f is analytic at 0. This means that I can write f of x to be uh, equal to sum of some a n q, because it depends on q, times x to the n. And if I substitute this in this equation here, Okay, and then I search for the uh, coefficients of x to the power n on both sides. What I will find is that a n, the sequence a n satisfies that a n q is equal to q to the power 2 n minus 1 over 1 minus q n times a n minus 1, which depends on q. So this allows us, in particular, to determine what is f of 1. So f of 1 is equal to 
1 plus q divided by 1 minus q plus q to the 4 divided by 1 minus q times 1 minus q squared plus q to the 9 divided by 1 minus q times 1 minus q squared times 1 minus q cubed and I continue as you can imagine but here there is a miracle actually one of two miracles which says that this is equal to the product for i congruent to 1 over 4 modulo 5 of 1 over 1 minus q to the power i. This miracle's name is the first Rogers Ramanujan identity. Rogers Ramanujan identity. And actually, there is another miracle which happens not only for f of 1 but also for uh, f of q, which says that f of q is an infinite product. And now, using the theory of elliptic theta function, which was very standard at that time, one can go from the left hand side to the right hand side. But let me now give you another version that I uh, like of this Rogers Ranajan identity in terms of integer partition. So, first, what is an integer partition? So, an integer partition of an integer partition of an integer number n is a sequence is a decreasing sequence, so lambda, let me equal lambda 1, lambda 2, to lambda r, such that lambda 1 plus etc. plus lambda r is equal to n. Okay? So, another way of stating this first project of homogeneous identity is by saying that, so another version, another version of the RR identities, Rogers homogeneous identities, is to say that the number of partitions of n without equal part without equal parts what I didn't say is that these lambda i's are the part of, of the partition and r here is the size of the partition or, or the length of the partition okay so the number of partition of n without equal parts nor consecutive parts is equal to the number of partitions whose parts are congruent to one or for modulo 5. Okay? So if we call those partitions, partition of part of, part, uh, of type 1 of n, if you like, and those uh, partition of type 2, then we can see, let's see. Let's consider an example. So four, the number four, 
we can write it as 4, we can write it as 3 plus 1, we can write it as 2 plus 2, it is also 2 plus 1 plus 1, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, we can see that this is of type 1 because there is no consecutive parts, no equal part. This is of type 1. This is also of type 1. This is not of type 1 because there are two equal parts. This is not of type 1 because there is consecutive parts. There is also equal parts. It's not. This one is of type 2 because 4 is congruent to 4 minus 5. This one is not. This one is not because 2 is not congruent neither to 1 nor to 4 or 5. And this one is okay. Okay, and this is true for every n. Now, the relation between this uh, version of the Rogers Amrujan identity and this version of the Rogers Amrujan identity is if I take the generating series of the number of partitions of type uh, of type one, then I will obtain the, the series that I have found here. This is uh, not very difficult. And if I take the generating series of this one, the generating series, maybe I say that this is sum of the number of partition of type 2 of n times q to the n, then this is direct to see that this is equal to this. Okay? And that's uh, from where is the relation between the two versions of Rogers and Rogers and uh, When Harvey had seen the proof of Rogers and Rogers identities, he said that these identities cannot have uh, uh, simple proof. In the meanwhile, these identities have a magical part because they have appeared in uh, statistical mechanics, in probability theory, course in number theory, in representation theory. And now I will try to show you how they also appear in, uh, in another domain. So I will introduce the arc space. For that, I will use only a bit of the language of uh, alpha geometry, but I will explain uh, everything. But maybe before I give you a plan of my talk, it's a good time to give a plan of the talk. So, the part zero is talking about the Rogers and the identity. The part one is the arc space for arc spaces and an invariant of singularities. I will say what all of this means. Part two is maybe uh, the example of a smooth case, the example um, in the case of smooth case. Part three is another example. from singularity theory. Here I can put, but it, it depends on the time, some motivations coming from singularity theory, why we are interested in such an invariant of singularity. And in the last part, I will talk about the link to the Rogers Amundsen identities and also how this link allows us to find, to find and prove a new partition identity and new partition. So let us see what is the arc space. First is x, the arc space of an algebraic variable. So I will take a very simple example of an algebraic variety and try to explain what is its arc space. Uh, 
nudge right variety over C to make things simple. I can take F as a polynomial, let's say, in three variables, C, X, Y, and Z, and X to be the set uh, of A, B, C in C3 such that F of A, B, C is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the variety defined by X, and I will write this to make it fancy as spec of C, X, Y, Z over the ID generated by F. The idea is that, uh, as you know, maybe uh, Grotendieck came from uh, functional analysis. So he wanted to say that one can understand algebraic varieties from understanding the, uh, the rate of functions defining on it, defining on uh, the rate of functions on this variety. So here we are interested in polynomial functions on x. And when I quotient by f, means simply that I put f equals 0. OK, so the polynomial f is 0 in this quotient. And this is very reasonable. Why? Because we are only interested in the polynomial functions defined on, uh, on x. So if I take, for instance, g is a polynomial function plus f, so these are, this is different from g. This is another polynomial. But as a function defined over uh, x, hello. Yeah. So as a function defined over x, this is the same thing, right? Because over, if I take a point a, b, c on x, then f equals zero, so they are equal. So this, this uh, is the uh, ring of functions defined over x, and I can also call it. Allow me to call it spec of O x. Okay. And you can remark that if I have two algebraic varieties, x and y, then defining a morphism from x to y, this is the same thing as defining a, these are k varieties, a c algebra to morphism from OY to OX. Why? Because if I have an element in OY, remember, an element in OY is a function divide, defined over Y. So if I have edge here, okay, then I can compose with this and I obtain a function which is defined over X. Okay? So I can go from edge to edge composed with X. So what I want you to remember is that defining a uh, morphism from x to y is equivalent to define a C algebra homomorphism going from OY to OX. Okay? Now what is the the arc space? I will call it X infinity, the arc space. X, X infinity, the arc space of X, which is X infinity. To be just correct, I will write it like this. This is a set of morphisms going from spec C of T, like this, to X. So, let us <coughs> the set of gammas like this. The, this should be thought as the, uh, as the space of formal curve traced on X. Okay, so to, to see why this is this defines a, a curve gamma defines a curve over x. What is this object here? This object is first if we take the line, then this this is associated with c of t because these are the uh, this is the ring of function defined over c. Okay, and if I take the ID defined by T, this defines the point zero here. And if I put a small, so if I localize, this is a bit technical, if you don't know it already. If I localize, then I'm looking at the uh, localization at, uh, at zero. But this defines a topology on this ring such that when I look at the completion of this topology, I find C of T. All of this 
just to tell you that this is, can be, let's say, intuitively thought as if we are looking at a kind of minus epsilon epsilon around zero. Okay? So this, this is the modulite space which parameterizes uh, curves or formal curves traced on X. But actually, this space is also an algebraic variety. It's a, it's a complicated algebraic variety because it is, as you would say, in general, <laughs> infinite dimensional. But we can, we can write the equation of this algebraic variety because look. So gamma is a morphism which goes from here to here. If you remember the discussion was, well, that we had here, an element gamma to give the data of gamma is equivalent to a C algebra homomorphism that is called gamma star which goes from OX, but OX is, so in the other direction, OX is C of X, Y, Z quotient by F, and it goes to C of T, okay? Because, okay? So, what is a, a, a C algebra homomorphism? I should define the image of X, the image of Y, and the image of Z. So let us say that the image of x is an element here, so it's a power series. So this is xt, which is equal to x0 plus x1t plus x2t2, and so on. The image of y is yft, the same thing. And the image of z is zft, which is z0 plus z1ft plus etc. Okay? So again, to define gamma is equivalent to define gamma star, and to define gamma star is equivalent to define x0, x1, x2, y0, y1, y2, and so on. But if you remember, I already forgot something. Yeah, I forgot because it's the, the, I wanted to ask a, a question, but maybe. Okay, so, but if you remember, f in this range is equal to, to zero. So its image should be also equal to zero. But the image of f is actually equal to f, because this is a C algebra homomorphism, f of x of t, y of t, z of t. And this is equal to, we write it, the Taylor's uh, uh, expanding of this. This is equal to sum of FL of, in the variables, let's say x0, y0, z0, till xl, yl, zl, multiplied by t to the power n. Okay? So these are, I develop, and these are just the coefficient of t to the power n. So the image of this, since f is 0 in this ring, and this is a C algebra homomorphism, it should send 0 to 0. So the image of this should be equal to 0. And this is a power series. For a power series to be equal to 0, all the coefficients should be equal to 0. Sorry, I repeat once again. To define gamma, to, so to define a point here is equivalent to define gamma star, and to define gamma star is equivalent to determine x0, x1, x0, y0, z0, x1, y1, z1. So this is an infinite dimensional space which is generated by, sorry, whose coordinates are x0, y0, z0, and so on. Okay? And I should have that the image is 0. So I should have that all these fls are is 0. Okay? So I should, I quotient here by fl for l greater or equal to zero. And if I take, put here spec, this means that this variety, uh, let me call it x infinity, is actually the infinite dimensional space uh, which is uh, uh, embedded in uh, the infinite dimensional space with all the affine space with coordinate x0, y0, z0, 
x1, y1, z1, and so on, and such that all, all of these functions are set equal to zero. They, they call it zero. Uh, OK? So what have I done? Here it is. One, one can also remark that we have a natural morphism which goes from x infinity, let me call it to x. Okay? Let me call it psi. And uh, to see this, uh, you can just see that the uh, ring that we have, this inclusion, cx0, y0, z0, quotient by x0, actually this is nothing but, if uh, this is nothing but ox, this is ox, this is isomorphic, just put, change the name, and we have that this is included in ox infinity, so it gives a morphism which goes in the other direction. Now, one thing which is important about these uh, uh, fls is the following, that if I give xi to every i, xi, y i, and z i, the weight i, then the polynomials, the fls, are weighted homogeneous. Homogeneous of degree n. Okay, I will put that like uh, of weight n. Okay? Why why is this? Because simply if you remember, you of course remember because it's still here, how we have uh, uh, defined this. So I can uh, Let's say f, we have f of x of t, y of t. So I can write this as sum of y i times lambda to the power i times t to the power i with, with a parameter lambda. Okay? I do the same for x of t and y of t. So here what I should obtain. I just changed y i to lambda i. Okay? So this means that this is equal to sum of f l. And whenever I have xi, I change it to lambda i xi. Whenever I have yi, I change it to lambda i yi, and so on. Okay? For, for the other. Okay? And all of this multiplied, of course, by t to the power i. Okay? But I can think about the same thing a little bit differently by entering this lambda inside. So this is equal to lambda t times i, to the power i, okay? So I can just think that this is equal also to sum of fl, okay? Now I have xi, yi, because I didn't touch them, zi, and so on, okay? And here, instead of t to the l, what I will have? I will have, since I changed t to lambda times t, I have lambda l times t to the l. Okay? So I just proved to you that if I give the x i's the y i, the, the weight i, and so on, these f l are weighted homogeneous of uh, weight uh, l. Why this is important? This is important because this allows to put on uh, this ring here, do you allow me to call it r infinity? Here. All of this, this is the ring of the uh, arc space. Let me call it r infinity. This allows to put a graded structure over r infinity. What does this mean? This means that I can write r infinity as like this r infinity 0 plus r infinity. 1, and so on. And if I multiply someone in, in 
uh, a component of degree i by someone in a component of degree j, I obtain something in a component of degree i plus j. Why, why the fact that this is quasi-homogeneous give me this? Uh, this is like this. Let's look at c of x, y. Okay? So every time I give a weight to x, so I can give x the weight i and y the weight j. This puts a graded structure on this cf x, y. But imagine now that I quotient by, uh, let's say, y2 minus x3. Huh? Can I give x the weight 1? And y the weight 1, for instance? Huh? If, imagine that I do this. Andre, tell me y2 minus x3 is equal to what in this ring? y2 minus x3, this polynomial in this quotient ring is equal to what? Yeah, this is the cost. But in this ring, it's equal to zero, right? This polynomial is equal to zero, as I said in the beginning. You were following it. Okay. So, so this means that y in this ring, y2 is equal to x3. So if I give x the weight 1, then I will have that this is of weight 2 and this is of weight 3. So this is not possible that you have two elements which are equal, but which have different weights. But if I give y let's say the weight 2 and x, uh, sorry, x the weight 2 and y the weight 3, then this is okay because both of them are of weight 6. Okay? And that, that's why it was important for me to have that this is, that this uh, FL here are uh, weight conditions. Now, whenever we have a uh, uh, delta genre, we are there are other reasons also coming from singularity theory. Maybe I can mention them at some time. But we want to consider its Hilbert series. What is Hilbert series? This is a series which is a generating series of the dimension of the component. There's a problem. Is that if you remember what I wrote here, this guy here is actually the component of degree 0. And of course, René, you know that the dimension of this over C is how much? Is infinity, absolutely. So I cannot consider the, uh, the, the, the generated series of the dimension. That's why instead of considering all the arc space, I will consider the, uh, uh, the, the fiber over one, one point Allow me to say that this one point is zero, okay? Uh, because uh, I, this means that I consider f such five and f of zero zero equals zero, and I then I obtain a ring which is just r infinity zero, okay? And this is now again has r infinity zero uh, has zero plus R infinity 1, 0, and so on. Okay? And how this is obtained from R infinity? Simply by whenever I have x0 and y0 and z0 here, I put them 0. And I get rid of these cxy zeros. Now let me define to you what is called the arc Hilbert Poincare series. The arc Hilbert Poincare series. Associated with x, the arc Hilbert Poincaré associated with x at the point zero, okay, is a q is equal to sum for i greater or equal to zero of the dimension of r infinity zero i, okay, which as I said, this is the ring of functions over the fiber over zero of this morphism times q to the power i. Okay, this, we have first introduced this invariant with two friends that I will write their name later for Clemens Bruschek uh, and uh, Jan Skaters. Okay, so this is an invariant that will make the promised link. But first of all, let us look at this in 
variant in, the, in, a simple, in a simple case. You will see that all what I'm telling you is very simple. So let us take x equal a1 over c. So ju just the line, the final line. Okay, c, the final line. And as we said, we take x to be equal to 0. So if you remember all the game that we have played, will you know that x infinity is equal to spec, let's put here x infinity 0, which means a fiber over 0. I will write this like this, sine minus 1 over 0. This is spec of c of, so if I write this is spec of c of y, okay, again this is c, y0, uh, sorry, I have got, I don't have y0 because I have put y0 equal 0, y1, y2, and so on. Okay? I don't have equations because uh, you know, we don't have uh, f. We don't have equations. So I will take something like this, and the graded structure is given by y1, I give the weight 1, y2, I give the weight 2, and so on. Okay? So now we are interested in determining what are the what is the homogeneous components of degree, let's say, h. Okay? So that as you uh, maybe guess, so this plays the role of what we call r infinity zero and or zero like this. B weighted the weighted homogeneous homogeneous component of degree H of R infinity zero is the C vector space generated generated by the monomials y i one to the power alpha one times etc times y i r to the power alpha r. Okay? And as we said, since the weight of y i1 is i1, so the weight of this, the weight whose weight is alpha 1 i1 plus etc plus alpha r i r. Okay? But and this should be equal, the sum should be equal to h, because we are looking at the okay? This should be equal to h. But this, we can write it a bit differently. It's just i1 plus etc. plus i1 alpha 1 times plus etc. plus i r i r alpha r times. Okay? And if you like, I can put it in a decreasing sequence. And the sum should be equal to h. To h. So this reminds me, of course, of a partition of h. Okay? And if we if we call because this is how maybe Euler call it if we call P of N the number of partitions of N if you were here at the beginning then you know that P of 4 is equal to how much? Do you remember? Oh. Almost five. It was five. Okay. We had four equal four, two plus two, three plus one, and so on. So we have four uh, of them. Then we have that A H P, the arc Hilbert Poincare series of A1 at zero uh, of Q is actually equal to the generating series sum. Of P of N, or if you like P of H, for H greater or equal to zero, P of zero is equal to one by convention, times P to the power 
And actually, this is uh, very easy to compute, but I don't need because Euler had already did it. And we see that this is equal to the product uh, for h greater than equal to 1 of 1 over 1 minus q to the power of h. And actually, if you believe me, if not, this is also an easy exercise. If I change If I change, instead of A1, I take AD, so I take X to be equal to AD, and again, <coughs> 0 here, then A, you play the same game, and you find that A X P plus X at 0, let's let me write AD at 0 of Q, is the same thing as this one, so product of X larger or equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 minus Q to the power X, all of it to the power of d. Okay? Something even more interesting is that now <coughs> uh, I take any variety x of dimension d at 0, which is also smooth at 0. So smooth, you can imagine that this is a point zero, which belongs to x, but also that the partial derivatives are not all zero. But also, since this is my, uh, this is our uh, speciality, if, you, if I draw to you a variety with a singularity, I think you can guess where is the singular point. Yeah? Oh, this is the singular point. Uh, point. So if I have something which is uh, not singular, then we can prove that AHP, let's say here at a point x, AHP of x at the point x of q is actually equal to product of i larger or equal to 1 of 1 over 1 minus q to the power i, all of it to the power b. So everything depends on the dimension. Why is that? Maybe I can say this to Tony. Why? Why? This is uh, why do we have this formula? Because we are interested in those arcs which are centered at zero. So defining such an arc is the same thing as we said from OX centered at X, let's say, to C of T. Uh, so this is a local linear X to C of T. Okay? And now we know that this is, we have, this is close to the completion here, okay? And by the universal property of the computer completion, since this guy is complete, this should factorize through this. So uh, to look at the arc space of center at x of this one is very similar to looking at the arc space of this one. And Tony knows that because it is, uh, now singular, this is actually equal to C of y1 to yd, like this, okay? So we again play the same game, and we find that uh, we have this. So what I just proved to you is that for any non-singular variety at the point x, this uh, series is the same, okay? It's very easy to prove also that if you take now a singular variety at the point x, that the series is not equal to this. Okay? In particular, this means that uh, this, this is an invariant of singularities. It detects singularities. Now, we can discuss maybe later why this is, uh, if someone is interested in singularity, why this is, uh, this invariant is important from the point of view of singularities or what kind of information it encodes. But uh, let me maybe say that this is uh, very difficult to compute because because 
it's this uh, arc space is an infinite dimensional space, very complicated, many equations, infinitely many equations. But sometimes we can, so for instance, I have proved that uh, for those who know uh, what are, uh, so let x, x be a ratio of double point similarities, ratio of double point similarities. So this is a type of singularities which is very ubiquitous in surface singularities and which can be characterized in many different ways, for instance, uh, uh, using uh, quotient singularities by group action. So, ratio of double point singularity, singularity of dimension 2. Then, AHP, for all ratio of double point singularities, AHP is LQ is equal to the product for I, uh, let's say, right, uh, this one over one minus two uh, to the power, uh, all of it to the power three, times product for I greater or equal to two, of one over one minus Q to the power I, all of it to the power two. So for all rational double points in reality, we can determine this uh, but I don't know if the inverse, is, is the, if the other direction is true, which means it, it characterizes the rational number points of And we can do this, actually we can do this in different, uh, in different cases also, because the geometry of some approximation of the uh, art space uh, for this similarity is somehow simple. Okay, but in general, it's very difficult to uh, to compute, even if we are in dimension zero. Okay, because actually I've shown you f, but I've never said that f is reduced. So f can be a power. In particular, I will consider it for a power. Let us go now to the link to the Roger Zamanjan identity. So, theory that we have proved with uh, Clemens Bruchek and uh, uh, Jan Skaters, we take x to be equal spec of k of y over y square, so we replace f with just in one value, and this is just a point at this time. And for this we have the AH of x uh, at 0 of q is actually equal to the product for r over 2, 1, over 4, modulo i of 1 over 1 minus q to the power. And if you remember, this is exactly the series which appeared in the Roger Zamanjan identity. In the fourth Roger Zamanjan identity to the right. I will put it here at some time. Let me give you an idea of the proof. Actually, let me give you a proof. Because you have all the, more or less, all the ingredients to see the proof. So you remember, now I will try to write the, uh, the equations of the fiber above the zero in the arc space, or of the space of arcs centered as zero for this x. So it, it, this is defined by some equation in the, by some idea. So let's say I, which is included in CY1, uh, etc., Y2, and so on. Okay, let's just call it I infinity zero, because it defines the arc space, the arc of the space of arcs centered at zero. 
And now I provide the equation of this one. We have, uh, we have written, we have seen how we can find the equation. So the equations are given by y1 squared. Then I have 2 times y1, y2. Then I have 2 times y2 uh, squared plus 2 times y1, y3. Then allow me to, to forget a bit the, uh, the coefficients because they become more uh, difficult. And I will, I will be lying there. Here I have y2 times y3 plus some coefficients y1 times y4. And then if I continue, I have here y3 squared plus some coefficients times y2, y4 plus some coefficients y1 times y5. Okay? So I want to understand the Hilbert series of this divided by i infinity 0. Okay? The, the Hilbert series of, uh, of this guy. But what I actually have done here is uh, I didn't type the equation in any way. I write the equation in a northern way by giving the, uh, uh, by putting a weight on these values. What is this weight? By, sorry, by putting a norm. This order is defined, of course, by the weight. I compare first by the weight, but you see all of them here have the same weight. But also, uh, let's say motivated by, or not motivated, with a geometric inclusion, I said that I will put here y2 squared before y1, y3. Why? Because I said that y2 talks somehow about the second neighborhood. Y1, y y3 talks about the third neighborhood. So I, we said, let's see first uh, the second neighborhood. And then we will see what will happen to the other neighborhood. Here, for instance, y2, y4. I want to see it before y1, y5, because this talks about the fifth neighborhood. OK? And this is a kind of order. Now, what there is it, it's a, 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 a theorem which is very important related to this uh, uh, monomial ordering is that if I call, if I take the initial of i infinity with respect to this ordering, let us denote it by this, okay? Then, what is this? This is by definition, the initial, the id gen generated, actually it's equal, the initial of, uh, let's call it the g, Okay? For any g in i infinity. Zero. Okay? What is the initial of g? It's the first guy. The initial. This one. This one. This one. Okay? But, and, and there is a uh, uh, theorem, which is uh, an easy actually uh, proposition, which says that the Hilbert series of this guy is equal to the Hilbert series of the quotient of this ring by this idea. But the difficult thing is that this idea, in general, it's very difficult to find a, a basis which satisfy that its initial actually generates the initial idea. Such a basis is called a Grobner basis. Okay? But it's fine for miracle. And the miracle here is that, of course, if I have an idea here which is of infinite type, so if I want to try to compute, a uh, normal thing is try to cut at some place and to compute, try to compute a Grobner basis. If I do this, things become very difficult. And actually, I need to add many, many equations. But when I go to infinity, actually, I have a relation here which said, if I call this is, let me call this F2 and this F3, because I think of way two, then I can multiply this by y1, so I have y1 times f3 minus uh, <coughs> y2 times f2, and this is equal 0. Okay, so this is a, an equation that everyone is able to do it. And now, what I've hided to you at the beginning is the way I wrote here the equation is not, 
exactly the equation as we found in the, uh, uh, in, the in the definition that I gave you before. And then I need a change of value, which means that this ID becomes differential. So if you look here, I define that the derivative, that the derivative of yi is equal to yi plus 1. Okay? So you see, what is the derivative of y1 squared? It is 2 times y1 times the derivative of y1, which is y2. If I derive this now, so I will have 2 times, uh, derived first with respect to this one, so it is 2 times y2 squared, plus 2 times y1, the derivative with respect to y2 is y2. Okay? So this makes that this is a differential ID. Okay? And this equation here which look very innocent to you when deriving this equation we can prove that this deriving many times enough times as we need we can prove that this uh, this is actually when we go to infinity if we stop this is not true when we go this to infinity this is a problem basis now everybody can understand this part which is very uh, very funny. What this means? This means that using the theorem that we mentioned that instead of looking at this ID, we can only look at the initial ID, okay? But since, as I said to you, this is actually a Rogner basis, so the initial ID is generated by these guys here, okay? So this means that I want to look at the C, Y1, Y2, Y3, and so on, and I want to quotient by Y1 squared, Y1, Y2, and so on. I can write it like this if you like. Y, I squared, Y, I, Y, I, plus so one. And I want to look at the Hilbert series of this one. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, if I look at the uh, a monomial which is of degree h as we have seen before this corresponds to a partition okay but this should not contain something like this because imagine here if I take y1 y2 this is not a monomial here why because it is zero okay and this corresponds to this corresponds to the partition 2 plus 1. So this is not a good one. This is not a, a good partition because it has, from the point of view of Rogers and Grand, because it has, it has uh, consecutive parts. Okay? So if we look to this, actually the Hilbert series of this is exactly equal to sum of the number of partitions of type 1, if you remember what it was, exactly those the partitions without equal part, no consecutive part, of type 1, right, right, times p to the power h. And now, by Rogers and Rogers identity, this is equal to both for i to 1 over 4 over pi of 1 over 1 minus p to the power h. Moreover, by using simple commutative algebra, we can find a, uh, a series which converts in the Q-adding topology to the two members of the Rogers group. The beautiful thing now is that a cushion sometimes is not necessarily the best thing to follow. So we have found int intuition here to uh, we have found intuition, we take intuition to, 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 to give this order. But we can change the ordering. We can instead of seeing y1, y3 uh, or y2 squared before y1, y3, we can see y1, y3 before y2 squared. Forgetting intuition. So we put another ordering, and when we put another ordering, then we obtain another initial ID. And this other initial ID is given by something 
that we were able to guess, but not to prove, which is given by yk times y1, etc. times, sorry, yi1 times yik. This ID, or all, all the guys which written like this, was k being the smallest one. Okay? So if we go to see what kind of partitions this define, actually we look at a larger family. But in this easy example, we see, let us remember, four. So if we take four, then this is equal to four. This is equal to uh, uh, three plus one, this is equal to two plus two, and this is equal to two plus one plus one, and this is equal to one plus one plus one plus one. Okay? And we said that this is of type one, and this is of type one, this is of type two, and this is of type two. But this led us to introduce new type of partition of type three, since I said that yk, k is the smallest number here, this is the partitions defined. If I take the, the quotient by this idea, we have monomials. And this monomial encodes the partitions whose number of parts, which is size, if you remember, the number of parts, let's write it here, number of parts, is smaller or equal to the smallest part, which is k. Okay? So let us see, for instance, here, those which are of type 3. Those which are of type 3, this one, because the smallest part is 4 and the number of part is 1, so this is good. Uh, this is not good because the smallest part is 1 and the number of part is 2. This is good because it's smaller or equal and it's 2, 2. So this is not like 3. This is not good and this is not good. So we have introduced and actually we have done this with Pune Absharizu. Pune Absharizu, who was my PhD student. And what I uh, didn't tell you is that the theorem about looking at the R Hilbert Poincare series for k of x over x squared, for x squared equals 0, we have proved a similar theorem with uh, Helmut Burschek and uh, Jan's papers. And uh, for, x to the, for x to the n, and this is related to a larger family. Uh, which is called Gordon identities, Gordon partition uh, identities. And playing the same game, Puni Afshadijou in her thesis, <coughs> conjecture a uh, uh, huge generalization of, let's say, uh, adding a new member to these Gordon identities, as we have done here, for instance, with Roger's and John identities. And we have proved this theorem recently with Puni of Charizou and with Johan uh, Dus. Johan Dus and Frederic Jouer, who are two specialists of uh, uh, two specialists of the uh, integer uh, partnership. And I'm very happy to stop here. Thank you very much for listening.